Hi, welcome to Money Mondays here on The Rideshare Guy. Today we're gonna to be talking about unemployment, the stimulus, the COVID emergency relief fund that's being talked about with Congress and everything right now. And we're gonna look at some offers that uh, can help you make some money right now, as well as give you an update on the ERC, or the employee retention credit um, that I personally looked into last week um, for myself and what we decided to do. So let's get started. Hi, I'm Tyler from The Rideshare Guy. And today on Money Monday, we're talking about all things that have to do with the economy, with the unemployment rates, the stimulus, the government plans, everything in place. So let's get started um, by taking a, a second to look at unemployment. Now, right now, unemployment in 17 different states, the federal unemployment, the $300 a week that has been going on, it started at 600 and is now 300 every week that's going to stop right now as everything stands for everyone on december 26 but in 17 states because their unemployment rate has decreased by so much less than uh, five percent the um, federal program has actually stopped abruptly for those who still need it and are still in assistance so that's uh, one negative we talked last week about one state specifically that that was happening with um, but now uh, just looking at a report this last weekend um, there's now actually 17 states that this is happening. Um, so we've talked quite a bit about unemployment over the last few weeks. Um, now I want to talk about exactly which age groups are being affected the most by uh, this economic downturn and who are the most unemployed in each age group and why I think that is. So let's take a look at this chart. So as you can see here, very clearly, millennials and Generation Z are hit the hardest by unemployment. So these are people... Generation Z, you know, aged 16 to, to or age 20 to 24. Then you've got the the millennials, which are in their early 30s now, uh, late 20s. Um, but you can see those numbers are the highest in the unemployment rates. Um, part of the reason that I personally think this is is number one, they usually have the entry level jobs, and so they're not considered necessary quite yet you know these are things like um, bagging groceries or fast food or all kinds of different things they're, they're not exactly executives running things so of course they're going to be the first ones let go because they're not needed if there's not as much money coming in then then the low guys have to go so it makes sense that the younger ones uh, are the ones that have to be let go first number two i think is Again, specifically the, the younger generations talking about in this chart, it was mentioned from 16 to, to their early 20, late teens, early 20s. These are people probably still living at home and their parents don't want them working somewhere during a global pandemic. And so it's very likely that that is a cause or a contributing factor to this unemployment. Um, but also the companies don't want to take that liability. They don't want to take on someone so young possibly getting sick while working for them. So that's one reason it could be. Now, millennials are a little bit older. So that's my age uh, uh, bracket where I fall in place. And so some of us have larger careers. We've, we've grown a lot further than when we were teenagers. But unfortunately for millennials, you know, we hit the, the job market right at 2008 at that recession. And now we're having this economic uh, downturn. So we've we've already, as young as we are, hit two significant economic downturns, which have significantly decreased the amount of money overall wealth we can have in general. So um, one thing that we're we're looking at is this unemployment rate. Um, it's really discouraging for us, but you know um, we're we're hard workers. We're doing things all the time. So we'll continue. You know, a lot of millennials are out there driving for rideshare, starting their own business, or or becoming. CEOs or whatever the case may be, but it's interesting to see that these are the two age brackets, age groups, um, generations that are the highest unemployment rate, unfortunately. The second really big thing that happened last week was the COVID emergency relief framework was announced, a $908 million plan, um, kind of like a budget of what they're looking at, of things that they want to get in place. Now, again, we mentioned last week, December 11th is the final day that they can actually have something in place for uh, all of these programs to continue through the end of the year. So kind of to keep the lights on, they have to have something in place and done by December 11th in order for it to have the time it needs to get done. So let's take a look at this framework 
and, and see what each of it means for us drivers and people all around. So let's take a look at the chart. So a few of the things that, that are of significance to us, you have unemployment insurance, unemployment insurance, 180 billion, um, support for small businesses, including the Paycheck Protection Program or PPP. Um, this is going to help restaurants, stages, deductibles, things like that. So this is people like us, you know, the gig economy, uh, business owners in general that have been affected. They, they have access to another round of um, payment protection and ways to, to kind of get that cash flowing through their business so that they continue to be able to run their business and not go out of business um, due to this economic downturn. The second thing that is significant for many of us is going to be things like the transportation airlines airports buses transit and amtrak so not that that's specifically going to be geared towards rideshare driving but it's things like that that are suffering right now and we know we've we've covered in the past how lyft and uber are coming back faster than these other services so these other services actually need more help in a lot of ways um, but as an individual driver not a company oh, we don't tend to <laughs> be as concerned with what these companies need. But it's interesting that it's being noted that that does need help. Uh, next, you have student loans, uh, $4 billion, cost estimate on that, $4 billion, um, is because a lot of us still have student loans, whether we're working or have been working for quite some time. We have these student loans have been paid off. And fortunately, because of the pandemic, um, uh, many of us have not had to pay any payments on our student loans and there's been no interest accruing on said student loan. And so it's really significantly helped. But again, at December 31st, as the lights go off, um, everything is going to kind of stop and, and we're going to have to start paying again. So this new plan or proposal that they've put in place is, is going to hopefully allow it to continue so that we can get a little bit more time before we have to start paying those student loans back. Next is that housing assistance, um, specifically rental. Um, we know that many, many, many people rent. Um, it's, it's a very large percentage. And so many have not been able to pay their rent they, for many months. And again, January 1st, all of a sudden, the, the ability for landlords to um, kick people out of their houses for not paying rent is coming. So, it, but hopefully with this bill, it'll allow people to stay in their homes, um, be able to, to continue, work out some sort of plan, some sort of deal uh, with their landlord um, so they're not evicted. Um, but we, we'd really like to see something for that, especially those who are really struggling right now, which many of us are, um, just to pay rent. So it's something that is major concern. Another important thing there is the childcare. Um, many people, they want to work, they wanna to continue to work. However, they can't work because there's no one to watch the kids and they can't work from home and have kids running around or they can't go to work and have kids sitting at home. So childcare needs to be there in order to allow these parents to go out and make money to support themselves. So this isn't people who, who are refusing to work. These are people who their kids need to be taken care of. So it's important that that's in the bill as well. So hopefully they're able to um, work this out. Obviously, there's a lot more that goes into this. This is just a framework they're, they're working through, you know, around the clock, trying to get something in place. Um, again, they, they know that the December 11th, so this week, this coming Friday, they have to have something in place in order for, again, I like the phrase, to keep the lights on, just to keep the lights on. They have to have something in place that's going through the process by this Friday. So we'll keep an eye on it for sure just to make sure and, and let you guys know what's going on. It's crucially important that they get it done. They know it, working around the clock. They've got this framework, but they've got a lot of work left to do to make sure that all of the money is put in the right place. Unfortunately, the current plan, they've got no um, stipulation for a stimulus payment, one of those $1,200 stimulus payments. Uh, that's not even on the table. Um, in this particular framework, they're still talking about it. Um, President-elect Biden has discussed it. Others, the economic advisors and things have discussed it as well. But there's nothing, uh, according to this framework as of yet, that tells us we're getting a stimulus payment. But all of the other things, the unemployment, the child care, the housing, the student loans, the things that help us to that we can't pay yet, um, it does help with that. So that is a positive that we're looking forward to. 
And then finally, the employee retention credit. Myself, I had a call set on last Monday um, when the last video came out. I did uh, get that call and spoke with them for probably about 30 minutes, went through um, some information. They gave, we didn't get into all the details, but I gave them some rough estimates on how much I made with Rideshare last year, how much I made this year, the area I live in, how it's affected by COVID. And basically I was uh, eligible for, they estimated around $2,200. Um, to get that, I would have had to form an LLC, S-Corp, and they could do all of that work for me, um, and it would have cost about $855. Um, so not a bad deal. You're making you know, over $1,000 um, just by getting this employee retention credit, um, and it would significantly help give you a little bit of money. Um, my wife and I, after discussing it, decided not to do it for us um, because we didn't want to go through the process of having the LLC, S-Corp, um, have a business in place that we might have to dissolve later or might have to keep up with. Um, we're just trying to keep everything simple and so we didn't want to complicate our life. Yes, uh, an extra thousand dollars would be nice. Um, we'd, we'd love to have a thousand dollars, of course, just like anyone else. Um, but for our ease of mind and the ability to sleep at night, um, I would say that's worth at least a thousand dollars to be able to sleep at night. So. Um, that's what we decided. It's still a great program. I highly recommend it um, for, for you. Everyone has different personal situation um, and your mental health is probably better than mine. So being able to sleep at night won't be an issue, um, but you'll be able to get some money and, and really help you out, especially during these difficult um, economic times that we currently live in. And finally, the offer in order for you to make some money right now, we talked about last week, I'll bring up again the screenshot of my Rakuten um, orders that I'd have over the last few years. I've made over $200 from using this service. Um, referring other people to it right now gets you $40. So a great way, uh, send it to your friends, your family, uh, people who are doing shopping online. This isn't something that they have to pay extra for. This is something they're gonna be doing shopping, especially for the holidays right now. They know they're gonna be shopping online. Uh, to get those gifts and so just get you know have this chrome extension installed on your computer shop through it on the app and you're able to actually get money for purchases you're going to make anyway and it, they'll make money and you'll get some money from the referral so it's a no-brainer um, try to make some extra money as, as you can if you get 10 friends that's 400 dollars um, most of us have at least 10 friends so i'm sure you can send and get that signed up so that, that's it. That's our show for the week. We appreciate it. Let us know what you think. If you have any questions or anything in the comments, I read all the comments um, every single week. So let me know. Um, please subscribe to the channel. We have new shows every single day. A new Money Monday comes out every single Monday. And stay safe out there, everyone.